Hi everyone, it's me, Lucy. Today, we're going to read Pompeii Bird a lot. And I just got some good news for me, and it might be for you, and I'll just tell. So, you can see the whiteboard that I said, I see N to Dr. Jill. So that means like, you know, D10, you found, you see that? That means like, after 10 days, I'm gonna go to um, Disneyland and Sanrio Land. And I'm gonna see lots of Sanrio stuff and Disney stuff. So let's read Palm Pelly Bird a lot. The Sleeping Giant Once there was a town named Pompeii Say Pompeii Pompeii Near the town there was a mountain named Versus Say Ver So the Us <clears throat> The people in Pompeii Pompey lived like living by the mountain. It was a good place to grow grapes. It was a good place to raise sheep, and it looked so peaceful. But the mountain was really a dangerous volcano. It was like a sleeping giant. If the giant woke up, it could destroy the town. Did the people know about the danger? No, they didn't. A, a volcano is a special kind of a of mountain. It has a hole at the top. One day, almost 2,000 years ago, something was happening under the surface. Way down deep, it was very, very hot. It was so hot that rock was melting. As the rock melted, a gas was made. The gas was trying to escape. The gas and the melted rock were mixing together. The mixture was hot and bubbly. The gas was pushing the melted rock up through the surface. The melted rock was about to blast right up the hole at the top. The day started out the way it always did. The sun rose. People began coming to Pompeii with things to sell. Fishermen were bringing fish. Peddlers were bringing melons and straw hats. Farmers were bringing vegetables. Shepherds were bringing sheep. Carts rumbled through the narrow gates and into town. The noisy carts in the street woke up the people in the houses. The family who lived in one of the biggest houses was soon busy. The mother went to pray in the courtyard. She put flowers by the statue of a god. The father began, began to dress. His slave helped him. The children were playing. They were glad it was summer. <clears throat> The slaves in the kitchen were making breakfast. No one in the house knew that something terrible was going to happen. After breakfast, the children went outside. The streets were crowded. People were at work inside the shops. Bakers were busy baking flat bread. We were were busy weaving wool cloths. Potters were 
busy making clay pots. Slimes were getting water at the fountain. A musician was playing his flute. No one in the street knew that something terrible was going to happen. By late morning, many men were at the best bath house. They were having a good time. Some men were playing ball. Some men were lifting weights. Some men were talking in the steam room. Others were soaking in the hot pools. The father from the big house was there. His slaves were rubbing oil on his back. No one at the bathhouse knew that something terrible was going to happen. So I think this is the um the father from the big house because I think this is a packet of oil. By noon, deep town meeting place was full of people. Some people were looking for things to buy. Some people were talking to their friends. Lawmakers were meeting to make new laws. Visitors were looking at the beautiful buildings. The mother from the big house was there. She was praying in the temple. No one in the town meeting place knew that something terrible was going to happen. <clears throat> the giant wakes up. Suddenly, the ground began to tremble. All of the houses in Pompeii began to shake. The giant was waking up. Then there was an enormous cracking sound. The top of Vesa Villas blew off. A huge cloud of dust and ash came pouring. Everyone began to scream. People came out of their houses to look at the huge cloud. Shopkeepers came out of their shops. Bakers forgot about their bread. Farmers forgot about their fruits and vegetables, and lawmakers forgot about the new laws. The cloud was getting bigger and bigger. The cloud hit the sun. It was dark. Tiny hot petals began to fall on the people on in Pompeii. Some people found pillows to cover their heads. Some hid inside their houses. Everyone was running and pushing and shoving and shouting. Some people ran toward the town gates to get away. Others went home to protect their jewelry and gold coins. A few went to the temple to pray. Could the gods save them? The day became as dark as night. A horrible smell filled the air. It was like rotten eggs. People rushed toward the sea. A few held torches to light the way. The sea was wild. Huge waves kept crashing into the beach. Fish was left flopping in the sand. The family from the big house was able to get into a boat. They were able to get away. When the petals fell on palm pay, many people could not escape. They were trapped under the petals. Then hot ashes began pouring out of the volcano. The ashes fell on the people. The ashes were all hot enough to make their hair sizzle. 
The people in the street tried to protect themselves. They hid in corners and behind walls. They covered their faces with their hands and clothes, but the ashes piled up higher and higher. The people could not move. The people could not breathe. They were trapped under the ashes. The ashes kept falling. Heaps of ashes filled the streets. The ashes spilled into the houses. They piled up the first story windows. They piled up to the second story windows. The people inside the houses were trapped too. So maybe this is the ash in the second windows. You see? But Fesavisus was not done. Now a great cloud of poisonous gas rushed out of the mountain. The cloud covered Pompeii. A great river of hot ashes and gases races, raced down the side of the mountain. The river flowed right over the walls of the town. No one in Pompeii was saved. Across the bay, a boy stood watching. His name was Penny. You say, Pin E. Penny saw the strange cloud that came out of Vesas. He saw the darkness over Pompeii. Later, he heard about the hot ashes and petals and the wild sea. Did Penny ever ever forget get that day? No, he did not. So, we read to chapter 3. So, it's too long. So, maybe um, I'll read it next time. And thank you for reading for such a long time. Thank you so much. Bye!